There you have it, first 5K in the books in 19 minutes in the Hoka Carbon Rockets. Now taking out the 4%. Let's do this, another 5K back to back, last and final cross test between these two shoes. And then we'll see you in the studio. All right, come on, come on, let's put these guys on. There it is, there it is. Okay, second lap, second uh, 5K in the books. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you the time for that one. First one was in the Carbon Rockets, second in the Nike Vaporfly 4% Fly Knits, and it's a little windy, so sorry if the audio's off. All right, let's go to the studio, break these shoes down, give you my full thoughts on the cross comparison between the two, and uh, tell you also the distances that I think each shoe is built for. Sound good? All right, let's rock and roll, come on. Time to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Time to rock and roll and do the comparison between the 4% and the Rocket. And yes, the keyword for this video is comparison. Thanks for hitting it up down below. Welcome to the studio if this is your first time. And just so you know, I do not watch other YouTubers who make running shoe review videos. Why? Because I want to give you my unfiltered opinion, my gut reaction as to how different running shoes are impacting my feet, my ankles, my legs, and yes, most importantly, my overall running biomechanics and performance. So, just want to mention that at the beginning, and today I did a cross test. What is a cross test? Basically, I think it's really important if you're going to be comparing two shoes that you run in one and then you run in the other immediately, back to back, so that you can build up that muscle memory as far as how each shoe is making your uh, your feet feel, your cadence, uh, change up your cadence, all of that good stuff. So that's what I did, and I tried to change the shoes. Uh, you saw me downtown Denver. I tried to change the, the shoes within like two minutes. That's the goal because, again, just so I remember, okay, I felt this way in the Rocket, I felt this way in the 4%, and there you go. As we dive into the comparison, you've got your fly knit uh, upper on the 4% and then an engineered mesh on the rocket. Guess what? I'm going to give the upper hand to the rocket for overall comfort. I'm really, really enjoying the comfort and uh, breathability of the upper on this rocket. A little more so than the 4%. And listen, if you live in a very hot and humid climate, both of these shoes are going to do well. But I, as far as uh, allowing your feet to breathe and so your feet don't get too hot, but I am going to give the upper hand to the rocket as far as comfort and breathability for the upper. Okay. Moving on to the midsole, you've got a, on the 4%, you've got a 31 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 21 millimeter in the forefoot, which means a 10 millimeter drop. That's pretty tall. Over in the rocket, you've got 26 millimeter stack height in the heel, 25 millimeter in the forefoot, so a one millimeter drop. Totally different, totally different feel between these two shoes. As far as the foam goes, or the sorry, the midsole goes, you got your Zoomex foam in the 4%, and then you've got the ProFly midsole over here in the Rocket. It's gonna be very difficult for any shoe company to overtake that Zoomex foam. It is so lightweight. I, I think it's incredibly responsive, and I think the, well, we're we'll talk about the weight in a minute, but I can sense that there's, there's a lot of weight going on through the midsole of this rocket. So, I'm going to give the upper hand to the 4% through the midsole. Okay, on the outsole, listen, they both have rubber on the, on the outsole. Definitely the 4% is much smoother compared to the rocket. The rocket has more, I guess you could say, I don't want to say lug action, but just more traction going on. It's, uh, they're calling it a mitt, like a, a rubberized foam on the rocket. And this guy, it's a, it's got the harder rubber on the forefoot where you're going to be towing off. Okay. And both of these shoes are being marketed as racing shoes, which means, yeah, weight is important. I think it's, I think it's really important, especially over longer distances. Uh, every ounce you have to carry through your gait it will add up. Like, I don't know, I think we did the calculations once as far as how many steps we take in a half marathon or a marathon. It's a lot of steps. So if you think about ounces and ounces being carried over and over again for 26 miles, it does make a difference. Okay, in my sizing, seven and a half, 
you got six ounces, six ounces in the 4%, so 172 grams, and then you got 7.1 ounces, so 203 grams uh, in the rocket. So the 4% is an entire ounce lighter than the rocket. All right, just putting that out there. This guy is heavier on foot. And yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it when I'm running for sure. Here are my drawbacks for both shoes. The one millimeter drop in the rocket is driving me a little crazy. I wish that they would have bumped it up to four or five at least, maybe even six millimeter drop. I'm feeling like my heel is just collapsing down a little too far, a little more than is necessary at higher speeds. And listen, if I'm racing, I want to save my legs as much as possible for later in the race. So that is my number one drawback for the rocket. I'm just, and I, I bet, Hoka is going to get some feedback from people. I wouldn't be surprised if they bump up the drop to four, five, six in the future. That is my hope. Okay, and the drawback for the 4%. Oh my goodness. Oh, my, okay, I'm not experiencing this, but Nike, if you're going to charge, well, okay, I won't give you the price yet. Oh, you probably already know the price. It's a lot. Let's just say the durability of the midsole and the, and the outsole is just not there. And listen, it's like sacrifice weight for durability, durability for weight. Basically, I'm seeing quite a few pictures on the interwebs about how there's ch literally chunks of foam like coming off of the shoe. Now, I have not experienced that, but I've seen I've seen plenty of photos of like big 1-inch chunks just falling off the shoe in like a middle of a marathon. That is not good, Nike. You're going to have to figure that out if you want to keep charging the prices you're charging. Okay, those are my two drawbacks. As far as fit goes for both of these shoes, true to size in the 4%, I am sensing that this rocket is a little tight through the forefoot and heading toward the midfoot as well. Just a little tight on my toes. I wish I would have sized up a half size. And I know Hoka, uh, a lot of people think Hoka runs a little narrow. I haven't experienced that in the past with other Hoka shoes, but I am feeling it in this Hoka. Just a little narrow, so I wish I would have gone up maybe a half a size. Just putting that out there for fit. Uh, as far as, well, we'll just I'll just tell you now. Price, $250. $160, all right? Pretty big difference there. What if I'm doing the math right? $90, that's a, that's a big difference. So there you go on price. The big question, how could you use both of these shoes in 2019? You ready for this? Definitely, definitely a marathon shoe and half marathon. I don't think this is your best option for 5K or 10K, okay? I think the stack height is going to save your legs for later in the race when you hit mile 20 in a marathon and you're just pumping your arms and you're digging when your legs start getting real tired. I think the Zoom X foam is going to get you to the finish line real, real nice. In the rocket, I, I think this shoe is primed and ready for the 10K. Not the marathon, okay? And I was actually considering this guy for the marathon. I think the weight is just a... T and listen, I know there's... You can definitely race in this shoe for a marathon. But as far as the weight goes and running as fast as possible, I am not going to use this shoe in my first marathon in May in Cleveland. So anyway, this is... I believe this is going to be a great 10K shoe. Not even a 5K shoe. I think you can go lighter and more nimble like... Actually, might as well just pull it out now, the Saucony Fast Twitch 8, okay? I am uh, bullish on this shoe for 5Ks in 2019, and frankly, I'm just going to put it out there right now. A more, perhaps, accurate comparison would be comparing the Saucony Fast Twitch 8 to the Carbon Rocket. Like, they feel more similar than the 4% and the rocket. All right. And now listen, again, you could take this to the half marathon, marathon distance for sure, but it just, the weight is a little high and I think there's other options out there for you to consider. And lastly, you're probably wondering like, wait a minute, these are two carbon fiber plate shoes. You haven't talked about that very much. Well, I think the Zoom X foam is actually the real ticket here in the 4%. Yes, I'm sure the carbon fiber plate is helping to a certain extent, but again, that Zoom X foam is just 
Ama it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And in the Rocket, I'm not really feeling the carbon fiber plates. However, I, I guess I will just mention real quick, this is not as soft a landing compared to the 4%. Like, it, it might have a little better ground feel than the 4%, the Rocket, but it's a little more stiff of a landing, and maybe that is the carbon fiber plate inside here. Uh, but anyway, it's not like I'm feeling the carbon fiber plates in both of these shoes. Uh, there's there's enough midsole surrounding the carbon fiber plates that uh, I really think, again, that foam is the ticket. And again, we'll just continue to monitor and dialogue together about carbon fiber plates moving forward like we did last week on the vlog. It's like, holy guacamole, there's, I foresee many, many shoes coming out with carbon fiber plates in the not-so-distant future. And there you have it. That is my comparison between these two shoes, the Hoka Carbon Rocket and the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, both carbon plate shoes. Uh, but again, I'm leaning, I think, 10K for this guy, marathon for this guy for sure, and upper... Uh, the hand go the upper hand goes to the rocket for the upper comfort and breathability. However, the midsole on the on the four percent is just gonna be really difficult to beat. And given your 2019 racing goals, what depending on what distance you're shooting for, the PRs you're going for, what shoe would you lean toward, or what shoe is out there in the market that I am not talking about yet? Okay, so I would appreciate it. Let us know down in the comments. I hope you learned something there with those two shoes. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Mm. See you tomorrow.